Welcome to this week's Home Experience Talk. I'm glad that you are joining us here. My prayer is that it would really stir up your soul to walk out this amazing adventure of being a follower of Jesus and knowing that the kingdom goes before us. And so we have blessing and favor to go into this world to be a light. That is an amazing call, people. It's not just mediocre life. Well, I'm a Christian. No, no, no. You are part of the uh, warriors that are doing battle in this world and God is going before you and giving you authority and blessings in everything that you do. It's why I've been really focused the last couple weeks on making sure you know the blessing that applies to you that goes all the way back to Abraham. I want to share a little story for you because when I launched that talk that God gave me that dream and said, man, Greg, get everybody to understand the blessing because they can't operate in kingdom mindedness if they don't know who they are. And so we started talking about that. Well, that very week, my son's moped at school in Tallahassee gets stolen. And I thought he was going to freak out about it. But honestly, as we were praying, uh, I talked to him. He said, Dad, you know, I'm just going to have to trust God on this one. I don't, I don't understand. I, I, I wish it didn't happen. But And I was like, oh, man, okay, that's going to be my prayer is that he's encouraged in his faith over the situation. I, of course, want him to get his scooter back, but I'm going to just kind of let it ride <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Well, so many people prayed and lo and behold, he didn't get the scooter back. And I shared this at the pancake breakfast, but somebody sent him money to buy a used scooter. They Venmoed it to him while they were watching my message on the blessing. It was just amazing how God just like activated and boom, there it was. And so my son sends me a text. He's like, dad, you're not going to believe this. Look at this. I got a Venmo payment so I can go buy another scooter. And then he sends me a screenshot of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And he says, I am blessed. Answered prayer for me as a dad, for sure, and as a pastor. because That's the most important thing. Know that he belongs to God and that he has favor and blessing. And he can trust God in all these areas of his life. Well, it gets even better because a few days later, guess what happened? The police recovered his scooter. So he got a double blessing. The scooter's a little damaged. He's going to have to spend some money to get it fixed, but it's it still works, and uh, he got it back, and so he's going to have a little extra money now for some books and for some school stuff. And he says, Dad, I, I am doubly blessed, and that's so true. Just, just know that God is going to work these things out. Don't be fearful, and don't fret over them. All right, so today we're going to talk about fear, but we're going to talk about fear specifically about a word that when I say it, some of you might be like, oh, and that word is death. I know you're like, PG, really? Hold on. If you cringe a little bit when I say the word death, then I'm going to uh, suggest to you that you've allowed fear and you've allowed the enemy to distort your understanding of death. And uh, it's, it's keeping you from living the free life that God wants to have for you. And so that anxiety that creeps up about death is not what we're supposed to have. So hang on, I'm going to walk you through that. And I think by the end of this talk, you're going to totally shift your perspective on death. All right, so let's start off with this. Death is not owned by Satan. Yeah, he does not own the power over death. Who does? God does. How do you know that? Well, we're going to study it in the scriptures. But first of all, you need to understand that Satan is a created being, right? God is the creator. So the creator created everything else. So who has authority over all those things? See, most people walk through life and they think that this evil and good are equal opposing powers and that Satan and God are equal opposing powers like a yin and a yang. That's not how it works. They're not equal at all. God is way up here and Satan, who was created for good, rebelled against God and now he is the author of sin, but he is not the author or the giver of life and death. That's God. That should tell you a little bit of something about why we shouldn't fear it, because who's holding the keys to it? We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Many of you have been tricked into it because there have been images, and Satan oftentimes uses these evil images, and he uses images of death to try to get you to think that he has power over it. Uh, back in Greek mythology and in Roman mythology, they had these uh, these figures like uh, kind of like a god of death 
and uh, it has even transferred over to now there's a phobia called thanatophobia it's a fear of dying but it's not it's not just a normal fear of dying it's like you're constantly looking around the corner thinking you're gonna die. That's not from God. That's from the enemy, right? It's a phobia. It's a, there's a demonic influence that has gotten you off your game. And, and why is that? Well, maybe you've watched these uh, scary movies. You've opened the door to these things in your life. I, I, wanna, I wanna talk about the Grim Reaper, okay? So what is this whole Grim Reaper? You know, it's just a character. Somebody made it up. When was it made up? Well, in the 14th century it was made up because in the 1300s, a lot of people were dying from the Black Plague, which swept across Europe and just decimated the population. Everybody was dealing with death in some way. Well, somebody created this character because they were obviously sad and they didn't have Jesus. And so they uh, created a, a cartoon character that over time now has gotten scarier and scarier and scarier. Uh, you've seen this with the black hood and now it's a skeleton figure with this evil look on his face and it's death and you know it's got a sickle to harvest souls and blah 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 no 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 listen to me remember Jesus said not one sparrow falls from the sky without the father knowing it he is the author of life and he is the only one that has the power over death I can prove it to you because in the Bible it talks about this we're gonna go all the way to Job uh, many of you may or may not know that Job chronologically fits right in between Genesis. And it's a story where there's this righteous man named Job and Satan wants to test God because he says he can get Job to curse God and basically abandon God. And so here's the conversation that happens in Job chapter 1 verses 9 through 12. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. Ha <laughs> ha. Even Satan knew that God had blessed Job. What happens when God blesses you? You prosper. Yes, you do in life because God chooses it and you can trust him and rest in him. It was the original thing in the Garden of Eden that he was trying to do for us. But then it says, now stretch out your hand, this is Satan talking to God, and strike everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. All right, who's the authority here? God is. Doesn't that show you this, this place that Satan it doesn't have, it's not on equal footing, not even close. He has to even come and petition God. Why does God allow it? Because he shows all of us that we have a choice to make. You can either focus on this world and try to go after the promises of the world, which lead to death, they lead to, to darkness, or you can follow the light of God in this world, which will lead to eternal life with Him. I mean, really, it's amazing. You have to understand that we were created for that eternal life. In the Garden of Eden, when we were walking with God, we were created eternally for Him. Well, as we go on through Job, we're going to get to that Genesis story. We keep on going on in Job. The next day after uh, the enemy wreaks all this havoc in Job's life and calamity after calamity hit him, comes back the next day, he says, Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. You don't have authority to take his life. So you can do these things, but you cannot take his life. See, God was setting limitations on Satan. He puffs himself up like a roaring lion. He's not even a roaring lion. He's nothing. God puts him in his place time and time again, but yet he tries to use fear as a tactic to get us to think he's more powerful than he really is. He's been doing it for, for uh, forever. So how does Satan even get connected to death? Well, for that, we need to go back to the original story in Genesis with Adam and Eve. We go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. Remember that God created Adam to be in fellowship with him in the Garden of Eden. It's a place of heavenly things. 
And then he said, I, it's not good for the man to be alone, so I'm going to create a partner for him. And he creates Eve, and they're able to walk together with God in the cool of the day. It's a beautiful relationship. And God says, I give you everything you need. You can eat of all the fruit trees and plants and anything you want here except for one. Why does God have to give him a choice? Because love involves a choice. It's not love if you have no choice to reject that person, right? It's only love when they choose to love you. And so God made it real simple. He's like, there's just one thing I'm telling you not to do because he wanted to see if they were going to be loyal to him and trust him. Well, what happens? Genesis 2, 2 16 and 17. This is, what it, this is what the command was. I'm going to read this to you. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Hmm, the original mention of death in the Bible. You would be kicked out of this place of eternal life with God. And uh, so he says, just don't do that. Well, we all know what happened the serpent comes, and this is why he's the father of all lies, is he lies to them and he says, you're not going to die. And what happens? Well, this is the curse that is pronounced over Adam in Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. That's death. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. It's like this love story gone bad, right? Where God just desires to have this loving relationship. And man, we listen to the lies of this, of this serpent and, and we choose sinfulness. Haven't we all done that in our own lives? We've chosen things we knew were bad because we didn't trust. We thought that God was holding out on us somehow, that this life he promises us isn't good enough. So we got we to gotta supplement it with these other bad things. We've all done that. And, and so what happened is we... It says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of our sinfulness is death. In other words, what we deserve, how we are repaid, is through death. So some of you have thought that Satan holds the keys to death, but he doesn't. Uh, only God holds those keys, but he is the author of sinfulness, which is why that's where he operates. He operates to, to get you to choose sinfulness, to choose things of the world, so that you will be separated from God and ultimately die. Well, the love story wasn't over because God said, I don't want that for my people. And so he says, I'm going to send, and we know the story, I'm going to send my son, my very son, God in the flesh, Jesus, to be the ultimate sacrificial lamb so that my people will never Die. I'm going to read it for you in um, Philippians chapter 1. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to go to John first. And this is Jesus' words in John 14. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you know that you were created for life eternal? And Jesus says, look, I'm coming to make a way for you. This is why Paul can say in Philippians 1.21, for to me, to live is Christ, so I can live this life with Christ, no fear. I have power and authority by the kingdom of God. And to die is then gain. Because now I'm not subject to all these rules and regulations in this world. I have total freedom back to the Garden of Eden where I, where I was originally meant to be in fellowship with God. That's your destiny. And so if you're fearing death and you don't understand your destiny, that that's not who you are. And maybe you aren't believing that the promise God made to us through Jesus was good enough to break sin and death. That's exactly what it did. Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18 says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of Hades. Jesus holds the keys and he's going to live forever and you were destined to live with him. Do you believe that? Have you been maybe focused too much and Satan's been 
stirring and, and trying to like convince you that you're doomed and that you're going to die and you're never going to have anything and blah, blah, blah. That, that's all the mentality of, of, of Satan, not of God. God says you are a prince or a princess in my kingdom and I choose to bless you by my goodness and those that turn to me and repent and turn and walk with me, I'm going to bless because you're because you love him. It's why he was able to restore Job because Job never cursed God. He, he certainly had questions and then God kind of kind of shuts him up. But then he restores Job like double everything he likes. He got a double blessing, just like my son got a double blessing. That's your fate. That's your destiny. I want to pray right now for anybody that's maybe just been struggling with the fear of death. I don't think that's God's plan. I know it's not God's plan for you. And I, I think we can pray it right now to just go away. And I want you to release it as we pray together. Lord, the enemy has used death and he's tried to convince us that he holds the power of death, but he doesn't. He's a created being and you, God, are the only one that knows uh, the things of life and the things of death. And so anybody that's been struggling with fear, a fear of death in Jesus' name, I cast that out right now. Even as we pray, they're receiving that and they're just letting it go. That spirit of fear has to go. It has to be gone. And they're replacing it with a, res with a spirit of life the Holy Spirit that comes from you and settles into that place where that other fear was. Now a new life has been placed there and it has, it has pushed out the fear. And I pray that that's happening even now as I pray this in someone's heart, they're letting go of that fear. God, it'll try to creep back in maybe this week, but remind them of the truth that you have the keys over death and over Hades. Lord, for anybody that's struggling in their life, they're struggling to believe, they're struggling to trust you, would you just give them a supernatural faith that comes from you, help them to hold on to the faith that your son Jesus Christ had, that he carried it out all the way to the cross, and that he died for them, and then he rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's been given all authority in heaven and in earth. Let that be a truth they hold on to this week, and then let them walk in love, peace, joy, and hope in every aspect of their life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You have a destiny to live, and it's going to be an amazing life. So don't fear whenever the Lord's day is for you, that's his day. But you're going to be rejoicing in the heavens. He's got more assignments for us in the kingdom of God. God bless.